Hi boys and girls, welcome to Mini Monet Art School and today we are going to be drawing this donkey. Now this is a really fun donkey because it reminds me of a trip when I went to Santorini in Greece. So Santorini is an island off the coast of Greece and it is a very rocky island with a lot of mountains, a lot of cobbled streets that are not very accessible to cars. And so what happens is there are a lot of donkeys that can climb up those little cobbled streets and those rocky alleyways to the top of the mountain. On top of the mountain, there's a lot of beautiful churches and they carry luggage up the mountain. They carry tourists. You can sit on the back of these donkeys. They carry blankets, um, baskets of fruit and vegetables of flowers. They're really actually quite extraordinary and they are dressed very colorfully as well. So they would might have um, beautiful fabrics on their saddles. They might have little bells and pom-poms, even kind of little headdresses on as well to, I guess, really um, encourage the tourists to hop on a donkey to go to the very top of the mountain and look at the beautiful view in the churches. So that's what I did when I was in Santorini. Maybe one day you're going to be able to take a trip there and experience that as well. But that's what we are going to be drawing today. So let's put this one aside and get our materials. What I am going to be using is a Sharpie marker. And if you don't have a Sharpie, any black marker is fine. We're not using paints today, so it doesn't matter if it's not a permanent marker. Something like this is good too. I have a collection of colored markers, and that's what we are going to be using to color our donkey, and just a few color pencils. Um, so I'm going to be using purple or blue color pencils, but use whatever you have. Crayons would work also as well. Now also if you don't have this download you can um, click the link below and have that handy. That's going to help us with the steps. It's also got a few little um, sort of inspiration details of what to put on your donkey's back. And what else? I'm going to show you a couple of inspirational images of donkeys from Santorini too. So take a look. Okay, so now you might have a better understanding of the donkeys on Santorini that we're going to be drawing today. So let's get our black marker ready. I'm using an A3 page today and it is in portrait position and we're going to start by drawing the donkey's ears. So let's start over on the right hand side and I'm just going to put two fingers in from the edge and what's that? Maybe about a fist down two fingers in from the edge and I'm going to put a little dot there and that's where I'm going to start drawing my donkey's ears. So the first step is to go up for one ear and back down, across a little bit and again. Now you might find that donkey's ears are not very sharp, okay, they're kind of like curved a little bit at the top. But if yours are really pointy and sharp, then that's okay. We're gonna keep going because um, they're gonna look fantastic either way. The next step is to do the face of the donkey. So from one edge of the ear, I'm going to come down. And so I've sort of created a bit of a curve just here. And then I'm going to create a nose. Okay, so that is not pointy either. See how I'm curving around with my line? And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I might start back up here and then connect it where I left off. So from the top, I'm gonna to create a little bit of a curve and then just connect. So I have my donkey's head. 
Now all the Santorini donkeys would have a, I think it's called a bridle, so a bridle with reins so you could steer the donkey when you are riding it up the mountain and that means that there is a little piece of leather that goes across their nose. So we're going to draw that one on as well. So another half moon, just where the face meets the long kind of nose snout. And then we are going to draw two nostrils at the bottom of the nose, which are oval shapes. And I'm gonna color them in. Now the last step for the face is the eyes. So in my design, I have my donkey with closed eyes, but you could have your donkey with bright wide eyes. You could put some eyelashes on. It's um, maybe just two fingers above the little leather bridle that you put across the nose. So if I put two fingers above and then move my um, marker to one side for one eye, two fingers above and then move my marker to the other side and I have my donkey's face done. Okay, now we're going to move on to the body. Let's start um, just near where the bridle connects to the face and I'm going to create a neck. So you could actually do this with your finger, which is a really good way to kind of practice where your line will go. I'm going to start just here where the bridle is. I'm going to go down and then I'm going to go across and down for the donkey's back and then the behind as well. So here we go. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go across almost to the edge of the page, but not quite. And then I'm going to go down for the donkey's back. So if I'm measuring, I've almost got one and a half fists length for the donkey's body. Does that make sense? Otherwise you could measure it like this. That's probably a better way to measure it. One hand. That's as wide as you would like your donkey's body. So once that you have done that bit, I'm going to just tuck that line across the bottom here. I'm gonna leave a gap. I'm gonna continue this line. I'm gonna leave a gap. And then I'm gonna draw back up to the donkey's nose. So you can see where the body is going to go. Now what do you think is going to go in this gap? And this gap. Any ideas? We're going to put the donkey's legs. So let's start with the leg that's in front. Okay, I'm going to continue that down. And now, one thing to notice. Donkeys have quite short legs. They're not like horses. Horses are quite elegant with beautiful long legs for horse racing and a lot of galloping. Um, donkeys are, are short and they're a little bit wider as well. So that in mind, let's see. I love to measure with my hands. So I'm gonna use four fingers. That's how long, that's how long my donkey leg is going to be, four fingers. Okay, so if I have that measured there, here is my first leg, and just put a line. And now I'm going to draw my second leg. Okay, what I'm gonna put at the bottom of my legs are hoofs. They're like donkey shoes almost. So they are just sort of little squares at the bottom of the leg. <clears throat> I'm going to do the exact same thing over at this gap. So let's try again. We'll make sure that the bottom of the leg is in line with the front leg. Down. And now we've got a gap here. That's actually where the back leg will go. So it'll come in and straight. To finish off our legs, I'm going to put the hoofs on the back set. It's 
looking pretty good. Now, what do you think our donkey is missing at this point? Any guesses? It's happening up here. No tail. So let's add a tail. Okay, we have our donkey outline finished. So I'm wondering, does your donkey look similar to mine? Or is yours maybe a bit skinnier? Is yours maybe a bit taller? Maybe it's really short. I'm really interested to see. And you know what? It really doesn't matter how wide yours is, how tall yours is, whether it's got a long face or a short tail, big feet or a skinny belly, it doesn't matter. You're the artist and every time that you create a drawing, you're going to be doing something different. So it's actually quite fun and really unique to have very, very different outcomes for the same project. I'm really excited to see what your donkey looks like, but the next step is going to make them all completely different. Now you remember what I said about the donkeys carrying things up the mountain on their back? That's where we are going to draw something fun on the back of our donkey. The first step is to draw a blanket because all of the Santorini donkeys had beautiful blankets on their back that had really great, fun, colorful patterns. So that one looks like this. It's a big rectangle. Once you've got your blanket, now it's your turn to decide what do you want to put on. Does your donkey want to um, wear a saddle? Does it want to have a whole lot of rugs maybe piled up? Does it want to carry suitcases? What about a basket, a big basket of fruit or flowers? So this is where you guys can um, decide which sort of direction that you want to go. And so I'm going to draw, let's see, I'm going to draw some luggage, so some suitcases. So mine are going to look like rectangles. Maybe I'm going to stack my suitcases. So I will have three big suitcases and I'm thinking on top of the suitcases, maybe there might be some flowers. I think that could be fun. So I will draw those before I finish that line of the suitcase at the top. Now we haven't finished that rug as well. We need to create some really beautiful patterns on that rug. which we are going to do. And then we're going to be coloring those in with some markers. Okay, so my suitcase has a whole lot of flowers on the top and I'm just going to finish putting some suitcase handles as well. I wonder what you are drawing on top of your donkey. You could be doing that now actually. Well, I'm just finishing off the handles on my suitcase. Hopefully this load for this donkey is not going to be too heavy to carry. Okay, it's looking pretty heavy actually. Now I'm going to put some patterns in my blanket. So let's see, I might draw a sort of flower shape again. Now what I want you to remember is not to do any kind of patterns that are too tiny um, because they're a little bit tricky to colour in but we can add those um, kind of smaller details with our coloured markers after. So you could be drawing some stars, polka dots, stripes would look great as well. Um, 
this is looking finished for this section anyway. Okay, that's a pretty fun blanket. I've got a few other things to suggest for our donkey. A lot of these Santorini donkeys would have lots of kind of scarfs or pom-poms around their neck, even some bells that would ring. Um, and they would also have some decorations around their head and on their ears. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put some sort of neck designs and some head designs on my donkey. Okay, he's looking a bit fancy. The last step for my donkey is maybe putting some little socks or some little decorations on his feet. And you can see here that I actually put on um, the inside um, line of his ears as well. So let's put a few little kind of a wavy details here for our donkey's feet. And actually, maybe I'm going to get this donkey to wear some polka dotted socks. So creating some big, bold patterns on our donkey is going to be um, easy for us to add lots of color because it's going to define where we want to place our color inside each of these patterned elements or pattern shapes. I'm just going to finish off this last little polka dotted sock. Maybe you guys have put some zigzags on your donkey. Okay, he's looking like he needs a bit of color now. So this area here, it's got quite a lot of white space. So instead of drawing, 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 um, and using up a lot of ink and you can sometimes tear the paper if you do that too hard with your marker. I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to use my pink. I am going to create a whole lot of lines in that space. And you can see that I have white spaces between each of the lines. So it's not a block color. I'm actually creating a base with a whole lot of pink lines and that are not solid. So that saves you sitting there drawing and drawing and drawing to try and get no white space with one marker. We can do the same process but just having lots of white spaces and you're practicing creating a whole lot of repetitive lines as well. So if we do that in a wide space, you might have um, a wide space in your suitcase. You may have a wide space in your blanket like mine or even down here on the legs. Then I'm going to use a darker color on top. So this was a light pink. Now I've got kind of a dark purple. And I'm going to do a few line details in a different direction on top of what I just did. So I'm just gonna go like this. And that's kind of creating another little pattern on top. It's also giving us the feeling of a bit of texture in there as well, because remember this is fabric, this is a a blanket on the donkey and we know that blankets are woven with fibers and threads so we've got two different lines going in different directions and it's just a really fun way to color in so I'm gonna go ahead and color in the blanket and the suitcases for my donkey and you guys can do the same So this technique on this suitcase is called hatching with line. So what I'm doing is drawing a little um, kind of section of lines in one direction, 
so they're horizontal and then I'm going to change my direction and go vertical so it almost looks a little bit like a checkerboard of lines so I've got vertical lines then horizontal lines vertical lines then horizontal lines so I'm creating a pattern from a distance it looks like a really bold color but up close it's a whole lot of lines with little white gaps but they're arranged in a hatching pattern hard work. I finished my blanket and my suitcase and now I'm going to be moving to the head and the neck and then the fancy socks. Now remember we're leaving the donkey white at this point. That's going to be the last step that we're going to use our colour pencils with. So let's keep using our fun markers and move on to the head and then the neck pieces too. Now here's another tip, when you are colouring in a design, it's nice to think about the spread of different colours. So what I mean by that is, I can see I've used a little bit of green here for some leaves and up here. This area doesn't have any yet, so I think it's probably a good idea to fill in some of these spaces with green, so it's spread out across my design. Sometimes you might want a very blue color scheme or a very cool color scheme and you want to use all different shades of blues and purples that's okay but if you're doing something really multicolored like we are then it's good to spread it around all of the different um, shapes and patterns across your donkey design so if you have a whole heap of pink already on your donkey's face Try adding in a little bit of a different colour, just to even it out a bit. Now we come to the final few steps of finishing our donkey. We can leave our donkey white, and that's totally fine because donkeys do come white or grey, but I'm going to colour mine in, and I'm going to do that with a colour pencil. So I've got one colour, that's all you need, you can use two if you like. And I'm going to choose a light purple. The way that I'm going to colour my donkey is quite light all the way across and I'm trying to avoid having lots of white flecks but I want to use a really soft kind of stroke with my um, while I'm colouring. And then after that I'm going to add a few more details in marker on top. So I'm going to show you what I mean in a small section. I'm going to come up to the edge of either my blanket or the edge of my um, donkey's neck and I can press quite firm but not so firm that I'm holding it so tight and my hand hurts. And I'm going to let my little finger kind of rest on the page as well. So I'm not holding my pencil upright, I'm holding my hand just on the side like that. And that's how I'm going to get a really nice smooth stroke across my colouring. You might even see the kind of tip of the pencil lead um, start getting a bit of a slant on it. And that's just going to make it very smooth across your donkey. And obviously we don't see purple donkeys, but I think it's kind of fun to add some colour. So once I have a little section like this, I'm going to show you what you can do with the marker on top. Now, after doing this for a while, your hand is probably going to get a little tired, but it's going to be worth it. Okay, so I've got a really nice light purple there. There's a little bit of white, but not too much. And then I'm going to find a marker in the same colour 
I'm going to use the same colour, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I've got a dark purple. These are hairy, so I'm going to do some strokes, just like I did for the blanket that the donkey's wearing. And I'm going to create them just randomly across. They're not too many, but they're just very light strokes. Just a few every now and then across the donkey. So once I've finished the donkey with my color pencil, then I'm gonna go back with my marker and add those strokes on top. So let's get coloring. Now, as we move to the end of our project, just before you finish, what I want you to do is take a few steps back and have a look at your donkey and see if there's any areas that you missed. See if you want to maybe go back on and add a flower. Maybe you need to color in a section a little bit more, with a little bit more um, marker, a little bit more pencil. It's really good practice to stand back from your piece, create a bit of distance and have a look with fresh eyes. You can even show it to somebody sitting next to you or your mom or your dad to see if they have any feedback for you as well. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now I've decided just to add one little element to my donkey after having a look at him. And that is just to put a little bird just here next to this suitcase. So I'm going to add that and I'm interested to see if any of you have the same thoughts to add anything extra. So there's going to be a little bird sitting on the donkey's bottom. And I'm going to color that one in. And we have finished our fun, colorful donkey from Santorini. I hope you really enjoyed doing that. Now, one thing I want to mention is when I stood back and looked at my artwork, I noticed that Oh, I thought my donkey's face was a little fat and a little short. And I wondered, oh, I think I'm not sure about it anymore. But the really important thing about creating artwork is to remember, every time you do a piece of artwork, it's going to look completely different. And every time you do it, it's completely unique to you. There's no wrong and there's no right answers or outcomes with art. It's just the process and creating something from nothing. I started with a blank page and now look what I have. A really gorgeous picture. Can I show you the first donkey that I did? See this one? Don't they look completely different? And this one, look how different they are. But I did the same steps and I did the same process. So just remember, if you're not completely happy with every part of your drawing, it doesn't matter. I'm so proud of you for completing it and you should be too. So once you're finished, take a photo of you holding it, tag us and put it in the Facebook group so we can celebrate you. And I hope that you enjoyed doing your fun Santorini donkeys.